content is for informational and educational purposes only. You should not construe any such information or other material as legal, tax, investment, financial, or other advice. Nothing contained here constitutes a solicitation, recommendation, endorsement, or offer to buy or sell any securities or other financial instruments whatsoever by Draper Gorin Blockchain, aka DGB, the presenter, or other associated parties for the content being provided. Please do your own due diligence and seek proper counsel. Boom. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. It's it's a little abrupt just going straight from the uh, investor disclaimer thing to just all of a sudden it's live. I feel like, uh, um, I don't know, there needs to be a something. countdown should be in there? What was that? A countdown should be in there? Yeah, maybe the countdown. Maybe maybe the investor disclaimer has to come first while nobody's really paying attention anyway. And then you get the, the theme song something. We And I also just don't have a theme song like we didn't or an intro other than the disclaimer, right? Like, should we throw in the like, boom, 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 or like a punk ape strong theme song? I think you should. Well, maybe, maybe we start off with a disclaimer where everybody's just coming in, you know, and yeah, then yeah. we go into the song and then we roll into like right here. Right? Yeah. But, but I, I, yeah. So, so what should the theme song be? I, I think, I don't know. I like the song we're using now. I mean, it's, it's not. <laughs> Uh, well, I like it too. By the way, yeah, uh, out of trust, Oxnard, California. Um, ooh, is that a? Uh, uh, that's a, a gutter cat. It sweatshirt? is. It's a gutter OG gutter cat sweatshirt. Yep. Okay. Dang, that's a uh, an official piece of merch. It is, dude. It's the original OG sweatshirt, man. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I uh, I don't got one of those. I'm trying to wear something different every week. I like it. I. Hey, I'm not wearing a bad religion shirt. That's different. Um, uh, what did uh, um, Zuda say? Zuda, um, uh, my buddy uh, from up here, he he once said on a Blockchain and Booze episode, he said, um, bad religion is Alon's default skin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that was pretty good. Um, uh, yeah. Hey Pravi, what's happening? That uh, you were you lived out here in the 805 for a while. That was an 805 band. Um, oh, we got Jim uh, from New Good Zealand. Morning. What's up, Jim? Oh, we got Akshay. Akshay is in India. Akshay is the founder of a rad company called Proto. Uh, we're gonna be talking uh, talking about them very soon. We gotta figure out when uh, they want to make some things public. Akshay, you should just be on uh, next week. Akshay on next week, if you want, no pressure, or or any other week, um, whenever you want. That would be um, good. Uh, yeah, tell tell everyone uh, where you're at if you're watching live. Um, ooh, Chad is uh, is uh, in from Texas. Pravi says eight oh five, um, but you're uh, in Miami now, right, Pravi? Um, the uh, crypto capital of uh, somewhere. Uh, we got Malibu. <laughs> Southern Southern California. I yeah. love how decentralized like crypto is, and how we have people all over the world that we're friends with because of it. I I do too. It's so freaking cool. Um, the fact that uh, you know we can go from like I was thinking about this recently. Um, yeah. It's oh, Pravi's in in Vegas. You there two weeks early for the Super Bowl? Um, uh, so. I was thinking about this and it's totally a roundabout thing, but we were watching football this weekend. There was some commercial for some crappy pizza like Domino's or Pizza Hut or something like that. And my son was like, dang, $7 pizza or something. I was like, oh yeah, I used to live off of those cheap $5 um, Little Caesars pizzas. And I got this flashback of when I bought this condo many years ago. And when we were fixing it up, I literally didn't have a fridge yet in here or anything. And I remember sneaking off, buying one of those $5 pizzas, and then sitting on a folding table in the middle of the living room, like one of those plastic ones, eating this $5 pizza, and then checking into my work computer. Because I like got one of my neighbor's Wi-Fi or something, I was on my work computer. And this is like 12 years ago. And I remember it being like, not a fight for the people I worked with, because I worked with really, really cool people. But it was not a, a, a thing 12 years ago to work from home. Even though I had a laptop for work, every day I brought a backpack with my laptop home with me and stuff, but literally like 
nobody worked from home. Like I had to request permission to randomly work from home. When I worked for, I worked for a company that was owned by Amazon, like, you know, but working from home was not an acceptable thing. Cut to today where like the whole world's working from home. We literally are hanging out with our friends in, in Vegas, Malibu, Texas, uh, and uh, India right now, live on this call in New Zealand, you know, New Zealanders eating their pizza, right? Okay. Uh, um, Haps to the Niners. Um, One uh, question I have to look ask for you that your team's there, but but all the teams I wanted didn't make it. So I think what everybody was wondering if you were eating pizza while on your computer, were you at least having a keyboard cover? Absolutely not. <laughs> That's pretty gross, bro. <laughs> I was in a dusty house that was being uh, 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 literally like every bit of this place was being torn apart. It was all dusty on a folding table eating with my hands while grease all over the keyboard being oh. onto the keyboard um now i yeah now we have like these most well for my kids we've like these rules you know like you know you eat at the table you wash your hands and then you could go to the devices Dude, the worst I'll, thing still, I ever I'll still do these live streams sometimes like taking a bite of a sandwich <laughs> Dude, I, dude, having a kid eat Cheetos and then go grab the game controller is like the worst thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't be that guy. You can't be the guy that, remember when we were kids, there'd be the dude who made you wash your hands before you got on his Nintendo? You yeah, that would be, that be me, bro. <laughs> it's like, yo, dude, go wash your hands before you touch my gear. <laughs> I remember we had a friend in the family that would do that. And we'd be like, really? We were all like annoyed with him. But now in hindsight, it's probably the right call. Uh, that's, yeah, see, fueled by the hot and ready special. That's it. Dude, a $5 like pepperoni pizza. Uh, uh, it's not yeah, a pick. See, Jim, Jim, Jim would be just like that too. I know it. Uh, yeah, it's, that's hilarious. Uh Oh, no way. Chad, do you work at Nintendo? So study on the impact of different cheap chip grease on game controllers. Hey, did anyone, did any one of them improve? Uh, did any of them improve, uh, you know, uh, playability? You know, make, make better their keys. Better yeah, the keys. The keys. Uh, Cheetos were the worst. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Cheetos would be the worst. Could you, yeah, can you imagine, you know, imagine the QA you have to do at like Nintendo and stuff, right? Like maybe we got to get Chad live on here and explain it to us, but you know. Yeah, good to see Chad on here. It's been a while of, since I've seen Chad. Um, good to see Chad. Um, just the idea of um, just, you know, the idea of like dudes pouring you know like grease on purpose onto like a nintendo game pad and seeing how it works and whatever um that would be that would be such a fun job i had a friend who was who consulted for the first company to ever put um uh tablets in the backs of taxi cabs in um in vegas so there was this one company that was the first company ever to put um, advertisements on the roof of taxis, but that were like, um, they started with just static ones. Then they put like the screens on Vegas taxi cabs and they sold their company to what's that one company that owns all of the billboards. Um, I forgot what it was called, whatever they, they do radio ads and such. One of those big advertising conglomerates. So uh, they sold that company. Then that dude's next company was, we're going to put tablets in the back of taxi cabs, put advertisements on them, allow you to touch screen uh, um, and all that stuff, right? Um, uh, OOH advertising. That's not the name of the company, but is that um, what's that stand for? Over, I think, I think that that's what it stands for. But so they have tablets in the back. But dude, you can't park a car in Vegas without air conditioning on for more than 20 minutes in the summer before it gets to be like 150, 200 degrees inside the back of that taxi cab. So the dude, literally, um, my friend who consulted for this company while we were working at MySpace still, he got a gig to, um, they actually got a few old ovens, put them in like a warehouse in the valley out here. And bought like 50 tablets from every company 
and actually did heat testing on them. They'd like, they'd literally run programs on them, put like, watch them and see how hot they could get before the laptop to, to these tablets broke. So they'd bake these laptops at like 250 degrees and stuff to see if how long they could handle it, um, which must have been just disgustingly bad for you. Like when they broke, you're like heating up the batteries and stuff. But how fun of a job would that be? So they had to like, basically figure out and heat test all these tablets because back then think about this this was 15 years ago more than that even right to 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 figure out what 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 these things could handle um tablets became uh yeah in N nyc but in nyc you didn't have the uh issue with cars getting to like 250 degrees inside in the hot summer um uh uh so so pretty fun. Yeah, Pravi Westwood One is one of those local advertising companies. It wasn't them. Um, um, it's it's one of the ones that own the actual billboards. Like when you drive, drive around LA and you see in the bottom corner, they're like, it says the logo of the company that actually owns the billboard. It was, it was them. But it doesn't matter. Uh, it's uh, We're now in 2024 and tablets are in the back of every kind of taxi cab. Tablets are literally on the, on the freaking dashboard of all of our cars, um, uh, which is... Uh, Pretty, pretty funny. So where's that going? What's next, right? Yeah, it went from from uh, ads, right? What 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 Web three solution is going to be in the back of every uh, taxi cab? You're going to scan something, say that it's you, and then just automatically pull draw down from your crypto wallet every mile you drive in the cab. Sign sign a crypt yeah sign a cab with a crypto wallet or I park. I, there were companies actually. Uh, what was that? One? I'm what looking for self-driving cars. I Do you can't remember wait. there was a company called Test Loop in like the 2016-17 um, Web3 beginnings that wanted to do something where you just parked your car and you just it, you let it you notified it that I'm going to leave work at six o'clock and from that point on until six o'clock your car could be taken. Driving. Uh, as a, you know, as a like, you know, jump car kind of thing, as long as it drove back to your work or was dropped off by six o'clock when you left. And then you got automatically paid to your crypto wallet for the use of the, of your car. It was way too early. It's probably still a little too early for that yeah. idea, but, um, yeah. uh, pretty, pretty interesting. Right. Uh, I, I, but I think eventually that we'll see electronic cars. I'm one of those people that think that what's going to happen is we'll just raise insurance over time. Because we'll realize that self-driving cars can eventually drive better than people. And are they already people. are. The, the right. statistics show that, you know, it's a little bit messed up, though. And I'll, mm -hmm. I'll tell you why. Because I have a, a Tesla now. And if you're in the, like, the automatic drive mode, I don't have the full self-driving because it, it's really expensive and don't want to pay for it. And part of why I bought the car was to try and save money. I got lucky that I bought it before it got hypey and expensive. But I wanted to save money on gas. I wanted to try and see if it actually was better for the environment that's arguable because of batteries are horrible for the environment but when you are in the like automatic autopilot thingy and on the full self-drive it's supposedly like significantly safer than humans and i believe it because like in any 50 50 kind of situation where a human might cut around somebody or might slow down because there's something it will stop it'll like completely put you in the safest situation but Tons of people in those situations just take control of their car because they're annoyed that the car is like too slow and being too conservative or whatever. So even though technically, if you get the stats, the cars are like orders of magnitude safer than human drivers when they're in their full self-drive modes and stuff like that. Humans, when they're just annoyed with full self-drive, take it out of full self-drive and then it's no longer in full self-drive when they get in the accident. Yeah, um, but so, stopping is not always a solution, too, though. I mean, no, no, no. I've, yeah, you can get rear-ended, whatever. Off. I, I've pulled off. Like, I had a cars where we were in line, right? And I saw every traffic coming to an abrupt stop. So I pulled off and swerved to the left. The car behind me hit the car in front of me. And, yeah. and if I had stayed there, I would have been hit if it just stopped. Yeah. But because I was smart enough to pull to the yeah, side. Yeah, you, you pull to the side. Yeah. Well, And I don't know if that would do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know either. I do know there is like some modes where it says that it will like protect you by driving out of the way. Like it's not just going to automatically stop for you. You know how like there was I a like certain that. point in cars where they start doing the auto braking. Like if you didn't yeah. stop fast enough, it would start to do the like the 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 brake thing. 
like there's a setting that's supposed to like swerve to now, not just stop if you're going to get an accident, but like yeah. actually avoid that's it. Right. That makes sense. Well, there's a, there's a point where we have enough cars that act as a hive mind, right? Where they're communicating with each other. Yeah, right now they're not communicating right. with each other, but if they could, it would be even right. better. If they're communicating right. with each other, you literally can eliminate traffic just from the fact that they'll be able to drive that close to each other and work in unison or even just eliminate right. parking as an issue, right? Like imagine the mall in, uh, uh, if in Christmas time, if literally your car could come and pick you up and all the other cars just part ways for it, right? And get out of the way. You wouldn't need the parking spots. They could literally be like door to door against each other. You wouldn't need the road, the actual like normal road because so you would just, that amount of real estate that's needed for parking would compress to like a quarter of the space. It's not even half the space. It'd be like yeah. even smaller than that. Or it could just we're go talking down the street, Uber. right? It doesn't have to be waiting for you, like right there. That's why. That's why I do own some Uber stock, just because I have that vision of the ten or twenty years out that eventually everything will be electronic cars, and we'll just bring up your Uber or you know your other. Well, will it be Uber? Well, it'll be Uber if you don't own your car, right? But well, if yeah. you own your car, but that I guess that's the the future that you won't own anything and you'll be happy, right? Yeah. So well, you just won't be able to afford it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but you'll be happy. Um, yeah, you'll be happy because you'll be able to call up a car anytime legal, you need it. They'll they'll legalize more and more things like weed, and and you'll just be oblivious. Um, <laughs> exactly. it'll be um, uh, I don't know. Um, as long as you can go harvest some crypto and some video games, you'll be good. <laughs> um, fourth down secret setting AI coming. What is that, Pravi? Um, Pravi has been big into VR and, and some AI stuff very, very early. So he might have some, uh, some, 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 some knowledge there that we don't, um, that would be pretty interesting. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, where does it go from there? I, I have no clue. And how no soon clue. will it really happen? That's the, that's, the, that's the hardest part. I actually think we'll see a lot of this technology happen in other countries before it happens here, just because we have too much regulation and bureaucracy to get through hoops. Yeah. Or things that although, actually get through. Although there's going to be some good things that come. Well, I don't know about good. It'll be interesting, right? Because there's all these rules that are coming through where it's like they must make electric cars by a certain date. They must phase out gas by i don't time. see how that happens though I it doesn't that. in this country it cannot possibly happen because of the bureaucracy for the same reason yeah. why we can't get anything done how will they upgrade like when they say it in germany and stuff like that you kind of go okay they got their shit together in in certain civil ways that like when it comes to their infrastructure yeah. they'll upgrade their infrastructure properly the problem here is that there will be all of this bureaucracy and these certain companies who don't deserve it will get the like the contracts to upgrade our infrastructure and stuff like that. They'll never deliver on time. It'll be a huge mess. Um, they'll start fighting about whether uh, certain uh, um, ways to generate electricity are actually green enough or actually this enough or actually that enough. And they'll, they'll use that as the excuse. But it's kind of like, um, you know, the roads in in southern california there's a million things that could be done to make our traffic oh, yeah. situation and our roads better but none of them get done because to get them done you have to make a situation that's gonna piss off somebody and and uh we we're we're unfortunately the politics and the way things work just nothing actually well, gets done. It, you know it's it's funny. I'm over in the Middle East. I've, I'm not going to quote the exact time period, but I have a buddy who was posting and saying how fast they can produce a, a, a piece of section of road in, in, the, in the Middle East, right? A freeway. And it's, yeah. it's super fast, like less than like a week, right? And yet it takes us forever to, to do a road in the United States. Unless, remember after, after the Northridge earthquake, they, um, they built things back in record time. And it was the yeah. first time ever that they offered bonuses to the the companies if they uh, finished ahead of schedule for each certain amount of time ahead of schedule they finished, they gave them more money. And it used to be, and it generally is, if they go um, 
if they miss their schedule, they continue to get paid certain level of union wages and things like that. The actual company, so the com people who own the company, it's not even like, I'm not even trying to diss any kind of union thing. It's just mm -hmm. that they pay a lot and then they actually continue to get paid ahead of schedule. There's no, like, if I run a business in the normal world, not dealing with government, and I promise you, I'm going to build um, you this phone and deliver it on February 1st, right? If I deliver it on February 3rd, I might still get paid, but you're pissed off and I get paid the same amount. I don't get paid more because now, hey, guys, I'm late. I need to pay my workers three more days. You're, that would be fucking insane, right? Like nobody, that's not how it works in the normal world. But with government, they have certain rules and things that do that. And so the people, who, the contractors are incentivized to give them bids and things that aren't realistic because it doesn't matter. Once they win, they're locked in. And if they take more time, it takes more time. I still get paid and I'll get paid more. Um, and so it, after the Northridge earthquake here in Southern California, they did the opposite. And miraculously, things got done on time and even ahead of schedule because the incentives were there. Yeah. Um, in other countries, they have incentives. You can argue, though, in other countries, the safety issues could be there that yeah. don't exist here. And there's somewhere in the middle that's the right way to do it, right? Yeah, um, sure. but that's, that's, that's the craziness, but in other countries too, because they didn't have existing infrastructure, remember, or somebody was just talking about this. Was it on one of our calls or something, but somebody was talking about, um, crypto payments in Africa over mobile devices. First off in Africa and Europe and the rest of the world, cell phones and things like that, uh, their, the networks grew much faster and proliferated much faster than the U S why? Not because we don't have the tech in the US or the money or anything like that. It's because we had existing infrastructure for phones that worked pretty well. And then those companies basically pushed against it for as long as humanly possible. And our government aided that um, so for as much as, as long as humanly possible. But then we get leapfrogged. The same thing will probably happen with, uh, with certain well, things like that. Right? When, when, I, when I was in construction, what was interesting is, is we had, they, they were actually creating equipment right that you can control through a controller so rather than having to push and use the equipment yourself you yeah. can use all you can use a controller for all this equipment and i can eventually see that just being automated through ai you know with enough sensors you can detect various things and we'll see ai move into the construction space to, to do a whole bunch of various functions at least oh i'm way. sure well and and 99% of certain things can can already be automated. But the problem yeah. is, is safety issues or when some difference happens, right? Like yeah. uh, a brick comes out of the package broken, right? Does the machine know how to deal with that? If it's just brick, 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 yeah. it doesn't, right? But the second there's some AI basic vision, it can go broken brick, throw it to the side, brick, brick, right? Like mm -hmm. that's all it needs. Uh, and, and at that point, you don't need a human to be doing that part or the ground isn't quite level. It rains and there's something there. AI could probably measure it and do it in a, in a better way than a human, right? Yeah. We're um, just going to see acceleration through it so much faster, I think. It'll be, it'll be a little scary, a little interesting, um, a yeah. lot of fun. <laughs> I don't know. Are, are you more scared by it or excited by it? Uh, on AI? Um so, so, so from an economic standpoint, um, and I recommend everybody go back and watch the old black and white movie, The Grapes of Wrath. Uh, uh -huh. I, I kind of have that perception of it. If you watch the movie, The Grapes of Wrath, there's a scene where the, the, the banker drives in and tells the farmers to get off his land because now he, got a, he has a guy that can drive a tractor that can do the work of 10 men. And, and the, the farmers are, but I've been on this farm for three generations and now you're kicking me off, right? And the, Yep, the, the Beth Baker says pretty much yep, and so and that's where I see us going with AI is we've been so comfortable with having our jobs over the last couple of decades, and I think AI is going to come in and change the, the dynamic a whole bunch. And the only people who, who had jobs, you know, when they went they went west, right? And when they went west, the only people who had jobs out west were the people who knew how to deal with the new technologies. You know, the, the guy at the gas pump doing futuristic cars and, and and pumping you know gas from these new cars and and everybody everything that was you know more modern had jobs but anybody that was a farmer was displaced well okay so we're we're on the verge of or in the middle of the great depression right now and now we all gotta re restart 
right? Um, uh, man, now I got to rewatch Grapes of Wrath, but now I got that song. Uh, I'm a nerd. You know that I'm a nerd for all the weird old folk music and Woody Guthrie stuff. So I've got that song in my head that goes. Well, uh, I mean, the scary part that, is that do I re think me, folks. Well, originally we got rid of the blue uh, the blue collar class, right? The manufacturing, all that. A lot of that was impacted by just mechanization. Yeah. Now I think we're going after the the white collar class. And I mean, I still think, you know, there's still going to be the jobs out there for the handyman or the plumber who could do the plumbing because it's hard to have a robot go under, pump, pump a pipe underneath the house, right? But there's so and many for things. For the next white many world. years, it's not also not going to be economical, right? Correct, correct. But I, there's a lot of tasks like in the white collar level that, you know, are going to be simplified where we can say instead of having three people do a task, we can have one person handle it because they can utilize AI to, to you know, do it. Do the work. That's true. I mean, think about like one good handyman uh, uh, could probably have that's already good and trained. Basically, could be delivered a schematic or uh, the the things. Like, think about like every. Remember, you used to have to go like my. my I grew up in a shop that rebuilt auto parts, right? And mm -hmm. there would be like I would deliver. Uh, parts for Mercedes's and BMW's to German tech. That was literally the name of the garage that did the BMW's and Mercedes's. Then there was another dude who specialized in Toyotas and Hondas. Then there'd be another dude who specialized in American cars. And then uh, all of these things, right? This is just 20 years ago. Um, and there were people who specialized in fixing parts for tractors and stuff like that, right? But as com one, um, com those, all of these things are run by electronic components and computers now. So you just plug in a, a thing and it tells you which part of your car is messed up and, and whatever, but you still need to know how to replace it and whatever. Yeah. You don't need specialization anymore if you have tools that teach you how to do it. Or maybe you literally That's wear true. some kind of AR glasses and it's just like, it's literally showing you like <laughs> these are the two wires you need to work on or it yeah. looks at it and it goes it goes oh that's your problem the uh the pipe was installed incorrectly not um, everybody's mechanically inclined though i mean like uh, that's what i'm saying though but there are lots of people who are well, yeah for will, sure will that plumber will one contractor be able to do the the specialty of 10 right like instead of having a a plumber yeah. and an electrician and uh, Mason, right? Could one person who's good at their stuff do all of it now because they have instructions like in their ear and in their eyes and whatever in a few years? Yeah, yeah. Imagine having yeah, a pair of glasses that telling you, no, you're doing that wrong. Yeah. Do it like this. That would be pretty cool. That would actually be, that would be really cool. That would be really cool. Well, I've seen like, I've seen like uh, demos for things for like assembly lines so where like the yeah. AR is like showing you where your hands are supposed to go to do certain things. But that's like a really specialized one after the other, after the other kind of thing. But I've also seen at Boost one time, I saw a VR um, training for surgeons where they actually put on this VR thing and watched a real surgery in real time. And they could like mimic with their hands what to do and actually see Oh, what wow, these cool. surgeries look like versus so like the training for people can be way better and different too because i don't have to necessarily be in a theater in a hospital to watch somebody do some kind of cancer surgery thing to learn about how to deal with those kind of things where if it was recorded one time now thousands of doctors can benefit from it it's not yeah. just the doctors that go to that one school that could happen to be in the room when it happened right well and that's huge that's huge because your education is limited to those that you know in the environment that you grow up in right that's true. We're going wider, full circle. yeah if you have a wider array you have a higher level of just global knowledge that you can tap into and learn and educate yourself will all become should become smarter as a species hopefully if, if people are willing you know to actually learn yeah well smart it, that but that's the thing is will it create a bigger chasm right um well just to those so, who have access to it maybe but if everybody has access i mean the, the hard part is you'd be surprised a lot of people don't seem to want to actually learn anything right yeah. people are resilient to taking the time because they'd rather go watch a football game on the weekend they'd rather go scroll through their instagram feeds than, than actually sit down and learn something people want to play rather than work 
Yeah. <laughs> well, the playing in this case is a little bit of working, uh, yeah. um, right? Well, it used to be even more so, in my opinion, because back when we first started playing with computers and things like that, you had to like know basic commands and things like that to actually run programs and stuff. Yeah. Um, and now it's it's really almost too easy, right? But I do see through my kids and stuff, they want to do things. They start to research things and do things. And uh, they're, I think they are experts in research more than they're experts in actually doing the thing. Because now it's all about just knowing how to research things because all the information exists out there, if not almost. Oh, right? absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of crazy. So, so uh are we in the middle of the great depression now uh or are well, we i personally think we had it we just changed labels and terms okay that's what i'm saying I'm, I'm going grapes of wrath we're all we've all moved we've all moved to california and we just realized oh fuck everyone moved to california we still don't yeah, I, think job, right? out of I think they all moved out of california this well situation. they all moved to california then they went uh uh then they had to go because they got to california and they went oh crap everyone else did the same exact thing and now what? So, uh, so now we're in the, and now what, or are we somewhere in, in the middle? Like what jobs, like, right? Like what jobs are gone? What jobs are gone? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I mean, like, gone. Well, okay. Okay. So it will, one, we know COVID took out a whole bunch of small businesses from closing yeah. stores. So a lot of those, you know, maybe retail or a waitress. There's a whole bunch of those type of jobs that were probably eliminated. I don't know if they came back 100%. Um, you know, I, one, they're raising the wages in California if you work in um, fast food. Um, yeah. It's something like $20. So, and if I've had buddies oh, that yeah, have- totally. I passed by in and out and I was like 20 bucks. But then I, at first Ooh. I was like, oh shit, that's crazy. I remember <laughs> when I was a kid. But if I do that, if yeah. I do that same thing, in and out was the- a good place to work where they paid you like over 10 bucks an hour or whatever. But when they paid my friends and I 10 bucks an hour, I, I actually didn't get a job at in and out, but like some of my friends that did, and, and you would see that and be like, oh my gosh, a fast food place paying 10 bucks an hour. Gas was under a dollar because I remember it being a big deal right? when it went from so now gas is five mm -hmm. times more, yeah. six times more. Right. Food everywhere is is uh is multiples more, yeah. and then you're getting paid double. That's right. just currency debasement. It's it's inflation. Uh, uh, yes, but, but we uh, all feel like holy shit, you can get a job at In and Out for twenty bucks an hour. Life is good. Yeah. This, but no, it's, it's not. It's, but the, so, but the thing, the thing to notice is, is uh, I had a buddy that was going through a drive through, and he said the drive through was actually being taken done by an AI. It was a like an automated voice taking the the order. And, oh really? At where, which place? Ah, uh, totally. For, I'm spacing on the place. I don't want to. Wait, was that me? I like no. I like a month or two ago I did like uh, Taco Bell for the first time in like years and there was like a, an automated voice. Or well, no, now on Taco Bell you use a touch tablet. You walk in, you have to use a touch screen to order. I haven't gone things. inside. Of, I went through a drive through because I was like, I'm getting some cinnamon twists or All something. Right. I don't remember what it was. I was there's, driving and I was like, I wanted a Dr Pepper or something. There's five Taco Bells and I forget what they're called. There's five Taco Bells that are special that have like game systems set up in there. And they serve alcohol, and you can just go and play games and drink. They're like, yeah, it's. it's I, I was Not driving a futuristic bar. <laughs> yeah, going full on Wally. It was pretty cool. Was pretty cool. Um, um, but yeah, it's 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 one of these things that I think that we're gonna see more automation in the fast food industry with with your order. Because I had a buddy who does unusual orders. He always does like the vegan type of food for his yeah. his hamburger. <laughs> you know, like Beyond Meat type of thing, and he's all they always get it wrong. And he's all, but this AI took my order perfectly perfect this time. And I was like, well, wow. Now you also see your order on the screen before you go through most places. Like in and out still old school, but like um, you go to, I know I go to Starbucks drive through which is just sad that I do that so much. Um, but like when you make your order, they put it up on the screen. So if you catch on the screen that your order is wrong, you can let them know before it gets done. And that, that's one of those benefits. But, but yeah, I mean, that's true, right? We I, I did that one test. It could look at me. It was talking to me, making fun of me. I was saying things and it can hear me and it can understand me. It read my daughter's handwriting better than any of the um, automatic um, uh, um, what is it called? The the when the 
character recognition things, OCR. So, so AI already does that stuff better. It can listen to us probably better than a human can. Um, so, so that's that's scary, right? That's a job that's gone, well, or at least well, somebody reduced. Brought up a, somebody brought up a great point. Will automation reduce reliance on outsourcing? I personally think it will. If we, if we, if we, go, if we go more to being a, a, a nationalizing and bringing the, you know, one of the one of the problems with the U.S. is we took all of our factories of production and we put it offshore, right? We had China producing all of our goods and services, not all of our goods and services, sorry, all of our goods, all of our manufacturing. And so, if we want to bring that manufacturing back. It makes sense to utilize AI in in the production process to make it more efficient, right? And I think so. I think we maybe we see more of that where we start building well, manufacturing plants it, here. Again. You know, it's it's one thing we talk about. We go, okay, you're going to lose these jobs and these jobs and these jobs in the United States because we're thinking about it in our own communities and stuff like that. But how does it affect us when those jobs are lost in other Overseas? countries? Oh, huge! Because it's going to affect us big time if all of a sudden you know fifty percent of china doesn't have a job like how is that going to work or or india or you know actually i think india is going to be one of those places that becomes like a superpower like overnight they already are but like they they have uh, they have the right demographics i think the demographic well they've literally pushed everyone towards engineering understanding and stuff like that where in the united states um yeah. we haven't right and we haven't allowed importing uh smart engineers for for a little while now too which is not not great um in my opinion <laughs> uh, uh so you know like i i, I want to think about this world as this open world because we're in web 3 and just like we're talking about right we have the whole world represented watching us right now having this live stream and we all work together and we're all on the same team and we're all working on the same shit that's going to hopefully change the world and then we're thinking about these uh, things in a local way, but which is which is important to ourselves and to our communities and stuff like that. But what happens when the other side, when we do, when we go, okay, all manufacturing could be in the United States now because 90% of those jobs aren't actually done by humans. Does it actually help the people of the United States very much? The same people who are getting wealthy off of the sweatshops in other countries are just going to get potentially wealthier. Will yeah. we all have more jobs in the United States? Well, I, I think I think I part know. of the issue, I think one of the things there is, you know, there used to be an arbitrary, uh, an arbitrage there where if I was like some company, like a shoe company, and I sent my product over to China to be manufactured for, you know, pennies on the dollar, I can then come over here and sell it over here for a markup. The problem is, is now because we're more global, I can literally go and buy the same product from a manufacturer who probably probably the same manufacturing plant that made the original product, but it's a knockoff without the branding and buy it for a fraction of what I would buy it for over here in the United States. That's why brands are so valuable now and why people <laughs> would be willing to pay all this extra money for certain brands, or at least I think yeah. it's the same kind of thing. People who don't care about brands are able to save a ton of money. People who care about brands have to pay more now, yeah. right? Like, you know, being but a dude I, like but, me who doesn't really give a crap, it doesn't, it, it's like, right. It yeah. doesn't matter, but but it's not true, you know. But that, I think that hurts the brand over over time. I have to imagine that hurts your your revenue potential. Um, for sure. So now, company. if Nike can manufacture in the United States, it's only because they figured out a way to keep the cost so low. It doesn't necessarily mean there's more jobs in the United States. Yeah. Um, well, there's gonna be jobs to service that AI and the technology, but it's yeah. But you know, think about like a writer or something like that, or somebody that writes content or or something, right? If a company had 20 employees like that, you probably could get the same efficiency from one or two employees now with the aid of, of AI tools. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, the question is, is that we still are working out the laws and the legal ramifications of, of AI and is there copyright yeah. infringement or, or, or what, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, that, that, and that's going to go for a while, but whether it is or not or whatever, people will find ways to utilize it because, it, you know, the cat's out of the bag. And then there's going to be services from other countries who who don't follow those rules and then people <laughs> will use them anyway, right? And so instead of using a human being on a Fiverr or Olance or uh, Odesk or Elance or whatever, uh, those tools, instead of using a person, we just pay some service 20 bucks a month and we get unlimited amounts of content and things like that, that, that people used to pay people for. Well, I, I wonder too, though, could it bring back some jobs? So like, for example, one of the reasons I, 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 so when I was younger, I was in it, right. 
And the reason I actually got out of IT was because we started outsourcing so much IT out of the United States that I was afraid there wouldn't be any work going down the road or that just wasn't going to be you know, positive. And so I'm wondering if, if, if this may actually solve bringing, you know, encouraging some people to come back. Uh, I think I think it will. I think I think the thing is, though, the world has gotten so um, open that yeah. while we bring potential jobs back because now shipping is will be the, a bigger cost than labor yeah. um that'll be good for the environment it'll be good for certain <laughs> things but we've also made borders less important and stuff like that yeah. and um think think about crypto is a good example of this meeting americans every day who are in singapore and in thailand and in india and in, in switzerland wherever they are in the world because they're just going to where is the best place in the world to do my company if you're not in the weird crypto uh, um, world where you're thinking about regulation and you're just like a normal young person, you could just go, where in the world would I just like to be? Better cost of living, closer to a beach, but you know, whatever thing is important to you, you can do your job from anywhere in the world, right? Like there's a bunch of people, like if you weren't raised in an international mindset, like you didn't have, if you're just raised, like my friends who are American, never left the country growing up, right? It wasn't a thing. And yeah. so to them, uh, when you say something like, you work online, like have you thought about like, just go spend a month in Mexico, or go spend a month in this country, you just work online, nobody in your work would even know you're out of the country, not that it even matters. You could go and see some other city, do some other yeah. thing. Like they're, my, they're like, oh shit, I never really fully thought about it. They think about, oh, maybe I'll go to, to to vegas for a week and i'll be able to check in or or not vegas maybe hawaii or like you know so or maybe just some other state to visit family and and they'll get to stay online not have to take vacation days whatever the people don't think totally internationally but some do right and yeah. all of a sudden you start meeting people and they're like yeah i went to this place the time zones are actually kind of awesome because i work from like 6 a.m to like two in the afternoon and then I've got all afternoon open or vice versa. They work in the afternoons and they have all morning to do whatever they want in whatever country they're in or place they're in. Like that's totally doable now. And that I think takes away um, from the United States much more than we're probably gaining by bringing things back. Right. Because we're no like we are one of the greatest countries in the world and I fucking love where I live and I wouldn't trade living in Southern California for anything, even with the taxes, even with the things I complain about and stuff like that. Cause to me, that's not really um, a big deal, but the things that are crazy important that we don't have or don't do to a young person, it means even less, right? If, if you didn't have a family, right. And you're all of a sudden, like what happens when, when your son graduates from school, he's got an engineering degree, could work anywhere in the world and cost of living could be one tenth in some other place. And he might actually have mm -hmm. healthcare. He might actually have benefits and that stuff, you know, you're, you're invincible when you're that age anyway. So you well, don't care. My, son, like, my son may go to South Korea. Boom. I mean, <laughs> right. Like we'll see. I mean, but that's the thing is I've, I've, every time I meet, people from Korea. That's a great example. I, I did a bunch of, um, I met uh, some VC funds that are based in, in Korea from the Draper Venture Network and things like that. Like, I never meet anyone from Korea as just an example that doesn't seem totally stoked. And every time they tell you about certain things, you're like, oh shit, that's awesome. Like, and, and it might be because it's like grass is always greener or whatever. But like, if you're a certain age, there's nothing stopping you. Imagine you being 20 years old and saying, I want to go to South Korea. Like, You've never even spoken to somebody from there. You can't have a video call with somebody from there. You can't like even know where you're going to go stay. Like if mm -hmm. your son went to South Korea, he'd know what hotel he's in. He'd know exactly how he's going to get from the ho from the airport to that hotel. He would know if he could rent a house and how much the costs are. Everything, every little bitty, including the restaurant that he thinks would look real, that looks really awesome online where he's going to eat for lunch. He already could have dialed in. So I'm curious. We had to go to fucking AAA and see if like there even is a car from the airport. Do they have cars there? I don't know. I'm an American. Like I don't even know if they if anyone cool. speaks English. Do you remember right? how they used to have like trip advisors, like people that yeah. would help yeah. you like put together trips? That's, what, that's remember, why that people... site is called TripAdvisor because well, right, but, but are are, yeah. are there trip advisors out there that help you figure this out for tax purposes and for optimization of your company of like, hey, well. If, if if you structured your company over here, 
we can book you travels over here and this could help optimize your your whole tech situation. I don't know. The funny thing about that is that it feels so foreign to even think of a person doing it now because like the idea, like how there's got to be so few, like very few travel agents that are still in business, right? It used to be a thing that if you wanted a flight, the best way to book it was to call a person. Like my one of my parents' best friends, like growing up, like they had yeah. a travel agency. I remember going into their office when I was a kid and it was like a small place in like a- They used to be like MLMs, like-, like 10 desks. And they, she knew who to call at the airline to book the travel. And if she got the right person, she'd hook you up with a good deal. Like- what that's insane <laughs> like think yeah. about that like yeah. so and now it's that's you know but sure that there's no it. unknown right like i can you can do the research there's no like okay we're going to cross the border we're going to go this many miles south we're going to try to camp <laughs> at this place if it's open whatever like you would do like my friends and i when we were 16 we lied to our parents said we we're sleeping at each other's house we drove what? to mexico and camped at the beach but let's check this out. So we had the we drew we wrote them the like the directions on a piece of paper in pen. <laughs> I, I I know three people that moved to Puerto Rico specifically for tax purposes during crypto, only to move back to California to realize that it wasn't worth it and it didn't make sense and there was yep. other ways to deal with their problems. <laughs> of course. But that's that's when people do things for money or taxes. It's almost never the, the well. Right but the thing, thing is, is, I don't know if there's good advisors for that type of thing, right? Like if they are, they're really hard to find. <laughs> I don't know. The thing is, with stuff like that, and if you're in this world of online research and all of this information we have at our fingertips, it's almost better to do the research yourself because you care a lot more, right? And you're gonna do what's best for yeah, you and so your unique situation. situation. Yeah, but, misinformation out there though. but yeah, that's, that's a first world problem kind of situation. I'm thinking about 20 year old us, we finish school or we decide not to go to school. What do you do? We could go anywhere. Imagine you have, you have the ability to go anywhere in the world. You can work any job anywhere in the world. Right? So that's the thing is like, well, in the time that I lived in, you could work at countrywide, you could work at Amgen or you went somewhere else. Like those were like 90% of the employees. A like, lot of these companies are coming back where they want their employees back in the, in the workspace. Okay. Right? Just if, because they want it doesn't mean they're going right. to get it. They're going to have an adverse. They're going to have some yeah. employees that like it. And then some employees that don't like it are going to leave to their competitors true. or to people who are open to it. But true. But it's only the U.S. who are paying the great wages. If they get the job in some other country, they may not get as great as the wage, right? But guess so, what? What yeah. if what if my wage was twenty percent less in uh, working at one of the True. competitors, right? True. But I could live not in California. Yeah. If I could live in in Arizona, that's already way less than twenty percent cost of living. Or if I want to live in another country, it could be twenty percent cost of. So living. are you saying you're leaving LA? <laughs> No, living somewhere I'm, cheaper. I've, I <laughs> made that deal with the devil. I, I when I don't live in LA, I live in the suburbs. But uh, I've this is where I was born and raised, and I love it. And I and I and that's uh, most you know, people. That's most people. Though most people uh, don't uh, want to leave where they're where okay. They're. But but I could work anywhere, right? And yeah. then you can choose. And guess what? You know what? Like I thought about this. If I was twenty years old, I'd probably have two jobs, online, and they probably take the time and effort of of one, right? Because you'd be able to play those games and do those things. I remember I worked as a delivery driver for a company called Sir Speedy Printing. My first day, the boss made such a huge deal about how fast I made all the deliveries because apparently the person who worked before me was a slacker. That the next day, I went to the in and out drive through during my route. I grabbed some French fries. I took my time. I got back and he was still stoked. The next day, I did it again. But by like by like a week in, I was making the deliveries as fast as possible, driving to a friend's house, going swimming with them for like an hour, and then coming back to work because I was a stupid 16-year-old, right? Um, I would make deliveries. I had a 1955 Buick. It was the stupidest thing in the world. I make deliveries in that. The gas mileage was horrible, whatever. I didn't know if I would make it to the delivery because the car would, you know, like break down. <laughs> but I did it because I was just a stupid kid, right? Pretty sure that movie's like that. A 16-year-old where you could get a job online with one company, get another job online with another company, 
it's not that hard to do or have some side hustle. Well, no, there's some thing. rules. There's some yeah. rules on that. Like if you get a job, depending on the contract. Yeah, what 16-year-olds are reading working. what 16-year-olds are reading those contracts and actually following the rules and give a crap, right? Uh, and, you know, and I'm not saying that the average person is going to do those things, but somebody who really wants to work from home will figure it out and be willing to take the pay cut to work from home cuz yeah. they and if and if you went economics you could save money on your car insurance. You could save money on gas. You do save money working from home too, because oh. it's you know there's there's all these these extra things. You yeah. know you could save money not even have a car because you can Uber when you need it. You know there's there's depending on what city you live in and when what you do. There's just so many options now that didn't exist. Oh, sure. And yeah, and the thing obvious. is, it's less and less tied to a geographic location. So that's why I was just thinking out loud, like what are the what. You know how is it going to change? Like what's no, it? it's going to open things up. Um, you know, it's like anything. It just depends on you know your willingness to learn and be flexible and go out there and, and find stuff because there's always something out there. Um, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, but <laughs> it used to be right. Like that. That's an interesting thing what Pravi said. But also, I totally agree on the prompt engineering is going to be a job. But it's the job of one smart. If we're talking about writing, was like a, an example. One smart writer could do the job of much more because then they're just an editor, right? Versus yeah. a uh, versus writing all of the content and all of the stuff. And Pravi said the thing about, you know, schools failing. I think that's that's a big, that's been happening for many, many years, for over 20 years that I've seen engineers are being begged to quit school to work more hours because certain places didn't care. A little more now, uh, depending on what where you're going, but what jobs and stuff now start with we're not going to look at your resume unless you meet these certain prerequisites and stuff like that like it's weird no you know, I, like, you know i have a son who's going to school for computer science and focusing on ai and, but i mean as a dad like i've been telling him dude just start building some software yourself and like you'll always be better like running your own business and building your own product out yeah there. yeah so if different. if you have that kind of gene in you where you thrive in that way right like yeah. um because we see people pitch all the time some people are coming to you for the wrong reasons it's so obvious they're like you know and then there's some people who absolutely have to be starting their own company and working for themselves and doing yeah. it their own way i think um and and you thrive either way right yeah you could be great either way it's just the path is so different now and like it's on one hand it's it's probably scary right because there isn't like the oh i got a job in finance so i'm gonna apply the finance department in these three big companies in the town that i live in and hopefully one of them i i can start off and work there for the next 30 years that doesn't exist but you yeah. do have every opportunity across the world but you're also competing with everyone across the world too that is a hard part too and yeah. um you have to play to those your advantages versus others and it's that's that's got to be scary and hard also i don't know yeah works works both ways what are we gonna do <laughs> hey you live in california too man yeah, you live I, more in the burbs than i do but still i i'm only i'm only in california though because like I, i'm an opportunist and i got my house really cheap <laughs> well same same with with my condo but but you're saying that but you know, that means you could still sell it in California and move to another state if you want. Yeah, to. I'm a huddler, though. That's right. <laughs> I'm not I'm selling anything. <laughs> uh, Except for I do have an NFT listed right now that I'm like potentially making. If it sells, I'll make 10x on it. So I'm like, okay, that'd be cool. So I mean, yeah, it's cool, but I can't ever let go of things, and I just collect and collect and collect. Yeah, uh, that's why I'm super long. That does you well in the crypto space. It does. That's right. I think it does you well in every space. That's it the is. thing. Is there are very few people who trade stocks and things like that who are like active traders who are really super crazy successful. It's always the long game. Yeah. Well, but so here's the thing. It's all because of our debase, our debasement of our currency, right? And and I really this really hit home. Cause like I've been a collector all my life. Right. And, and I wish my, my dad had a better understanding, I think of economics, but like, you know, I grew up collecting comic books, collecting toys. And it occurred to me one day, cause I held this toy in my hand that I kept and I had kept it in the package and everything. Right. And I was online looking at what the value of it. And I was like, it was $15. And I was looking at the price tag as I bought it for like $5, like 15, 20 years ago. And I'm like, Oh, who this, this thing's really inflated. And then I, I went to the toy store and realized the same type of action figure 
of equal value is selling for $15 right now. Yeah. And it literally realized in my head that all this thing did was hold its value. It didn't go yeah. up in value. It just simply held its value better than the dollar did. And that and cost that you point, more to keep it that way. And then you didn't even get to did. play with it as a kid. <laughs> I know. So at that point, I'm like, my kids might as well have the damn thing because like, it, all it is is holding value as a toy and if nobody's using but it. That's, that's a thing with, with real estate and all that stuff. And that's why also it's like offensive to get excited that in and outs paying 20 bucks an hour because then you start comparing it to other things and you're like, oh shit, really. no, this is horrible. <laughs> this is bad, right? So, like, and it's, yeah, it's educating people on that and helping them understand. And once you understand that game, life is all different. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and it is, it is, but... But the one playbook that people always at least can go to, because it's the one that everyone has in some way followed, at least and once they become an adult, is real estate's the easiest way to see that. Because yeah. everyone has that story of, oh, crap, when I was fresh out of high school or when I just was out of college and I went to look for my first apartment in place, it was so expensive to buy that $100,000 condo or whatever. And I could have got it at that price. And now you look at them and it's five, well, seven, 10 X. The, we the were amount. talking before this meeting, um, before the stream yeah. about our kids having crypto wallets. And like my daughter has a crypto wallet. I have friends who have friend, kids that have crypto wallets, right? And and it's pretty, pretty remarkable. And so like my daughter made some profit in her crypto wallet from various tokens. And and so one, she bought, she wanted to buy, you know, we bought, she's in the manga and and anime yeah. art so we bought an nft that was a manga related nft and uh, then also we took some of those profits and we put it into like rap bitcoin yeah bitcoin exposure so now she's got like a hundred dollars of bitcoin you know at you know at a young age that'll just sit there for the next you know five ten years yeah. um when my son when we were in the covid times and he was experimenting and stuff like that one of the times uh um when he lost one of his first teeth he got BTC plus plus from the tooth fairy. Um, <laughs> and uh, I wonder what it's worth now. You know, I think I gave uh, the tooth fairy gave him like five bucks or something. You might want to check on the liquidity. Plus plus. The, you might want uh, to check on BTC. Yeah, because BTC plus plus, I don't even know if it's still in existence. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I think that was like a, uh, Yeah, you know? I think it wasn't that like a, like they were a, a holding like like almost like a like a mutual fund or type of thing that was holding different yeah. assets. But Pi Dao was actually kind of cool. Yeah. The idea was that there were all oh, these stable cool. coins at the time, and they were ahead of their times. But there were all these stable coins at the time, and they every once in a while they'd fail. And so the idea was that they would do um, BTC plus plus was like wrapped yeah. Bitcoin and and a few different versions of that. And yeah. they would monitor it and as sort of an institution, would ever be able to watch it. And if one was potentially riskier or whatever, they would rebalance or whatever. And you would never lose the whole amount if one of them failed. Yeah, um, I know. I really like PyDAO. I don't know what exactly happened to it. Um, um, well, the BTC++ is still there according to Zerion. And yeah. uh, oh, the price distribution is across uh, PBTC, wrapped BTC. Uh, tokenized Bitcoin, which is IMBTC and SBTC synth, uh, uh, and um, apparently it's still there. And yeah. the, his five dollars worth of Bitcoin is now twenty one dollars worth of Sweet. Bitcoin. See that paid off. Good tooth fairy. Um, <laughs> but I remember, yeah, like um, don't but, tell him uh, that he might lose more teeth. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's. Dang, his uh, optimism drop is is what's uh, really rocking that wallet. He kept nice. it. Um, wow, killing it. Um, so that's that's the that's the fun fun of this stuff. And I think it's more the educational part at this age, right? But sure. your daughter, we've always we talked for years about how she's so into that art and stuff. It's if she became an artist, this is a much more. Uh, you know, I don't know, a better distribution model for art than the original gatekeep kept, you know, gallery ideas or work for the big companies, do those things. So it's, it's fun. Well, I think I'm it's excited. Really well, interesting. She's got all these NFTs that she's minted throughout the years now. And, yep. you know, and she's got a collection of them. So when she does become some artist, she'll be able to go back and sell the early collection stuff. That's true. Which, uh, which is exactly. Yeah. See, uh, 
here's the thing is I think that um, it's cheaper than college. You may or may not, they may or may not go to college. Um, I probably will. I'm guessing she wants to, that, she wants to. but, but here's the thing is I ended up going to college doing all that stuff uh, like, like most people. But I think run working in my family business, which was rebuilding auto parts, which people could, could arguably be like, how does that apply to crypto? How does that apply to this? There's no more valuable a lesson than actually doing it yourself and having to actually run a business and knowing and understanding that is I could I definitely 1000% uh, learned more usable experience from doing that than I did from school. Hundred one one million percent believe it, and it might be the type of learner that I am too, and how seriously or not seriously I took school, but it, it's still um, super super valuable. So I think of these things in the same way, like try to encourage my kids to play with these things and and uh, and participate that way, because otherwise, um, you know, you never. You, I, I don't know. I think it not otherwise. It's just in general. I think it's gonna amplify anything they learn in other places well i think it's important to always be a learner be, always yeah, educate yeah. yourself on learning something new right yep and Nothing. uh we're we, we're way over and we went totally sideways and talked mostly not about crypto which is totally fine i think we're gonna next week maybe we will have uh um maybe we'll talk proto which i think could be cool um if akshay can join us yeah. or uh but let's think about it but but um i want to take some suggestions from the crowd um, I think we'll have Tim Draper on soon too. I was uh, messaging with him about it, and um, we'll 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 start uh, bringing some guests on here, um, probably starting next week. So that'll be fun, and then we'll we'll take things in a certain way. I think a lot of people requested also a, a Lunar Crush update. So maybe John or Joe. Could come yeah, that would be good. We'd like to hear about how their new products working. Or their yeah, they're <laughs> killing it. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun. But uh, it was awesome seeing everyone. I will see you next week. Message us directly. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't ever say a single thing. Uh, I had this thing. Remember, I made a thing. Go to dgb.vc if you want to reach us directly or follow us at DGB Ventures on uh, all the platforms and stuff. Just search uh, Draper Gorn Blockchain or DGB on everywhere and, and connect with us. And uh, we'll uh, you could reach us directly. Um, and we have our Twitter accounts on the bottom of these things anyway. So follow and us. If you have a project you're working on, feel free to give us a picture. Yes, we can look at. Yes, please. Look yep. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you all soon.